sector, uh, we expected actually to have uh, some contributors. Okay, so also. can you can you open your camera? Okay, all oh. of you, please open your camera, like a physical program, right? We can see each other. Okay, okay. Let's okay. open your camera. It's better. Like this is like the online platform, like a physical uh, conversation, right? We can see each other, so it's better. Okay. Okay. Good. Good. Ah, please open your camera, everyone. <clears throat> okay. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's better. Yeah. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Secretary, please continue. Yes, we welcome all members who have joined us this evening. Uh, we are pleased and very joyful to have Dr. Jalal, who is expert in research, but also we hear from the an alumni from this university who has studied here from master's to PhD and now is a postdoctoral in Jeju National University. Uh, we expect to gain much on the area of research, uh, not just participating, but also on uh, how we can uh, gain the knowledge on research and also uh, specifically on the issues on tropical cyclones related with the extreme. Uh, and uh, we expect also maybe to get some uh, questions, contributions to what he is going to talk to us this evening. And uh, from there, then we can, can get the general conclusion from the, from the doctor. And uh, we welcome you, Dr. Jalal, for acknowledging actually your knowledge. And also we have put some congratulations also for you to agree to make your time this. We know you are very busy uh, in your area, but you have dedicated your time to have, to, to, to have this uh, seminar to us. So we appreciate your presence and your willingness to share your knowledge, your expertise to this area, to your fellows from this university. Mostly they just uh, follow you with your former trainings in your YouTube. When we spoke that uh, we are going to have Dr. Jalal, I said, oh, I have the videos, uh, some of the trainings on your YouTube. And then today they can hear directly from your mouth. So this will be very joyful for them also to uh, get some good stuff from you. And also uh, experiencing uh, how you passed from this uh, university and now you are a good expert, well known, I know. Uh, so we welcome Dr. Jalal for this uh, precious time to talk to us actually. Let me welcome you and also the president for at least making the greetings uh, to the audience. Welcome the uh, president for, from, from IMSA. Thank you, the general secretary, yes. Uh, the, actually, the, we would like to do this as part of the, in the venue that we already booked in US. Uh, but the expert uh, also from the online. But uh, according to the participant, you, the speaker, the, there is a no application. Uh, we open at least one week, uh, but the no application for the speaker position. Uh, that's why the school is uh, decided uh, we will continue only the online session. And that's why the, today the, we only had the uh, only online session. So according to the previous years, uh, uh, Dr. Jala is uh, very supportive to the, our INSA, even uh, since uh, he was studying in here, uh, a lot of the research experience and a lot of the computer programming skills, such as uh, NCA, uh, GRAD, and uh, Python. 
So that I also hope that today that he also bring new things for us. So we should uh, focus on the his presentation and we this these all the things will be the real operational war for our research area. So thank you, Dr. Jala, for your contribution. Thank you. Thank, thank you, President. Uh, thank you, President. Uh, now, after this short uh, introduction, I uh, would like to welcome Dr. Jalal to take over this uh, uh, good, wonderful seminar to start and continue. Welcome, Dr. Jalal. Okay, thank you, Mr. Secretary and Mr. President of IMSHA. Okay, so uh, why I share the screen? Because I want to inspire the newest students now who are doing master's or PhD or bachelor. So, okay, let me start with the real story. So you need to know the real story, what's behind, okay? So when I left the country in 2017, so 2017 to 2023, I finished my master's and PhD in Newest, right? So how was going my life there? So, you know, in Bangladesh, not only Bangladesh, in Bangladesh, uh, India or Pakistan or some of the developing countries or most of the African countries, we don't have much opportunity to learn the research, right? Especially the scientific research skills. That is our gap. So even like in my country, there are some program, but they are the paid courses. So if you are very from the poor family or maybe you are a student, so you don't have much money to pay the training courses, okay? So in Bangladesh, mostly train the GIS, you know, the ARC GIS, so most popular in Bangladesh. So even they took a lot of money. But as a student, I couldn't pay the training fee then I came to China in 2017. I didn't have anything. Like I was in zero, right? I only uh, knew the Excel, Microsoft Excel. Ah, like I'm in an ocean. I'm swimming. So I can find the, uh, how I can learn this complex programming like Python, NCL, Grass, or other programming. So how to adapt in China. So you know, in China, uh, especially in the winter, the temperature often is minus and outside is snowing, etc., etc., right? And every year China has like almost four months vacations, like in winter, during winter, two months, almost two months, even in like summer, almost two months. But in the five years, I didn't go back to home. Even I didn't spend my time, like vacation time, even the weekend, I was always in the lab. Okay, some of my friends was laughing. Hey, why you guy always curious and in the lab? So my passion was to run and what was my lack? So I need to back up this thing. So that's why my journey was started from the IMSHA. In 2017, I was a student of IMSHA, okay? So I started from there, I learned the basic of grass. Then I learned the NCL, then I started to give the training in 2018. Then I was a teacher in IMSHA. So after that, I learned Fortran, basic of Fortran, NCL, MATLAB, SPSS, Python, one by one, CDO. Then I run them and I provided the training in IMSHA. So okay, this is the real story. So maybe you, you will, now you have no experience in programming or you are like empty, you are struggling, you are uh, struggling with, your research or the programming or languages, et cetera, et cetera. Even like uh, if you go to the professor rooms, professor always say, hey, you, are, you are not good at programming, your research is not good, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, like this is a disappointing. So how to overcome the situation in Nanjing, especially in Nuist? So IMSHA is the best platform, okay? Where you can learn. But IMSHA cannot give you the all things. So you need to start the basics from the IMSHA. Then you need to have your passion to run. So you need to be curious. You need to be enthusiastic to run. So your aim 
will be to run and publish your paper and finish your graduation, right? And become expert. You need to find the job. So how to do that? Okay, let me start now our presentation. So can you see my screen? Yes, sir. Okay, Thank so you. is it clear? <clears throat> the voice is clear? Yeah. Oh, yes, yes. Okay, yes, so, so, I hope, really? so I hope you already knew my story in Louis, right? The, <laughs> the story of five years, okay? So I will share my research as a man of like what, whatever I did in my master's and PhD in NUIST, after my talk, I will give you research direction. So how you will get this programming language or how you can produce these figures, maps, or how can you be adapted with the data analysis? So how can you publish your paper? How can you be graduate easily, right? From the NUIST. So that is the, <clears throat> the purpose of my research. So even if you are interested in my uh, field, maybe in future we can collaborate, okay? We can publish together, okay? Anyway, so in my uh, master's, uh, so in my master's, whatever I did, I published two papers in my master's. So first was in the rainfall contribution of tropical cyclones in the Bay of Bengal between 1998 and 2016. I used the TRIM satellite data. And the second was, was the effects of particle wind shear and storm motion on tropical cyclone rainfall asymmetries over the North Indian Ocean. Then in PhD, I used the AI, machine learning and deep learning to forecast typhoon rainfall in the Northwestern Pacific, extreme rainfall indices, including like climate water balance in Bangladesh, okay? So my supervisor was Dr. Ewin Lee. Maybe you know that him. He's a professor of School of Atmospheric Physics. Uh, Nanjing University of Information Science and Technology. Okay, so someone sent the message. Where is it? Means what is? Someone sent the message. Okay. <clears throat> anyway, let's continue. So in my masters and my, uh, in my PhD, like I published masters and PhD five papers in a very good SCI journal. This is with supervisor. Then I also published another two without supervisor. That was like the, you know, the course paper. Sometimes we have some course paper in the master's or PhD. Then we write some report, right? From that, I published two papers as a first author, but without supervisor. Anyway, that was the collaboration. Uh, what I, I will present all of my first author. I will not present anything with the second author or third, author, all my first author, right? So first one I published in the Journal of Geophysical Research Atmosphere. This is American Geophysical Union. You know, this is a very top journal in our field. Then second one I published in the Art and Space Science. This is also from uh, in uh, American Geophysical Union. And the third one, uh, Journal of Applied Meteorology and Climatology. This is from uh, American Meteorological Society. And the fourth one, the climate water balance, this is International Journal of Climatology. This is a Royal Meteorological Society. And uh, the last one is uh, published on dynamics of atmosphere and oceans, uh, this Elsevier Journal, okay? So what I said, these two papers as a first author, but with a supervisor. <clears throat> so what is the presentation outline? First of all, I will talk about the significance and objectives of the study. Why we need to focus on like extreme rain, uh, sorry, tropical cyclone, rainfall or precipitation, whatever say, uh, climate extreme or drought. Why we need to focus on this? What is the significance of this study, right? Then study and data sets, then methods, the key points, because I will talk about the five papers. So what is a one talk is not possible to if, uh, give everything in the one year, but I will focus on the key points and the implication of the study, and I will provide the research direction for the newcomer, okay? So the acknowledgement, so in my master's and PhD, uh, my research was funded by <clears throat> national key projects of the Ministry of Science and Technology of China, National Natural Science Foundation of China, and the National Key Research and Development Program of China. So this uh, funding organization has supported us for this research, okay? So why you need to do the tropical cyclone research, okay? So if you see the global map, 
from this uh, figure that is adapted from the Pizzuti et al. 2010. So the hazard frequency and mortality rates from tropical cyclone, you can see the tropical regions. Most of the uh, countries in the tropical region affected by tropical cyclone. Even if I give an example, say for example, one, one single tropical cyclone can have the great impact. For example, Vola, Bangladesh, 1970. 300 people killed by this tropical cyclone. Can you imagine? 300,000 people, 3 million people have killed by this only single cyclone in 1970. Even if we uh, give an example like Hurricane Katrina in the USA 2005, it has impact like 125 billion of losses, economic losses. Can you imagine? Even only one cyclone can have great impact. This is the like a hazard frequency and mortality risks. Even uh, heavy rainfall from the tropical cyclone, heavy rainfall and high waves leading to coastal flooding. So it has a great impact in the coastal areas, okay, in the tropical region. Even strong winds can destroy the you know the houses, trees, and infrastructures. That's why we need to do more research on tropical cyclone. Even like extreme rainfall. Extreme rainfall indices, whatever I say, indices can have the great impact on lives and properties. Okay. Even effects of climate water balance, you can see from the figure, this is a the farmer, okay, and the agricultural land. So climatic water balance has a great impact on agriculture. So that's why we have focused the research on tropical cyclone rainfall, climate uh, extreme rainfall indices, and climate water balance. Okay, that has great impact on. <clears throat> agriculture okay so uh, in msc in paper one i have objective to estimate the truth to uh, tc rainfall contribution tropical rainfall contribution means how much tropical cyclone contributed to the total rainfall on an interannual and monthly scale over the bay of bengal region and the, in paper two uh, our objective was to examine the effects of environmental vertical wind shear Ah, so an storm motion on tropical cyclone rainfall asymmetry over the North Indian Ocean. Okay, so in PhD, so for the better disaster preparedness, the following scientific questions are needed to answer. Like first one, how can we improve the accuracy of typhoon rainfall forecast? Okay, to reduce the loss of life and property. One. Second is like how can we develop a model to predict extreme rainfall indices to reduce their impact on ecosystem and human livelihoods. And the third one, how can we reduce the impact of droughts and floods on agriculture by developing a new climatic water balance model? Okay. And fourth one was how do atmospheric parameters and the ocean atmospheric teleconnections affect the prediction? So to answer the above research questions, the aim of this study is to develop models for predicting typhoon rainfall, extreme rainfall indices, and climatic water balance. Okay, so that is the aim. <clears throat> so in the study, yeah, so this is, you know, the era, uh, North Indian Ocean. This is a Bay Bengal and this is the Arabian Sea. So in MSC, we focus on uh, the North Indian Ocean. And in PhD, uh, use uh, like Northwestern Pacific Ocean. So the China, maybe Nanjing is here somewhere. Okay, we are here somewhere. And I am here, like in Jeju is here. I'm here. This South Korea. So this South Korea, I'm here in Jeju. Here is an island. So it's very close to China, like from Jeju to Shanghai, only one hour. Okay. So if you take the uh, flight, only one hour, you can go to China. Even if you can swim, you can, you can go to China directly. Okay. So anyway, I'm very near here. Even, even uh, I use the Bangladesh. So for Bangladesh, uh, I use Open Giger Climate Zone. You know the Copen climate zone. So uh, the red field circle shows like the humid subtropical climates with dry winter and hot summer. And black <clears throat> black field circle represents the tropical climate. So maybe if you are interested, so you can read the Copen climate zone. Okay, so in Bangladesh we have a two climate zones. So we focus on this. Okay. 
So what was the data set? So uh, first, the, from the best track data set, I use the Indian Meteorological Department. So if you are interested in tropical cyclone research, so you can find the best track data. For if you want to use the global, so you can use the IB trucks. You know the IB trucks? IB trucks, another one is like Joint Typhoon Warning Center. But there is also some regional base track data. So like Indian Meteorological Department is for North Indian Ocean. So like Western Pacific, you can find from Shanghai Typhoon Center or other center or Japan, et cetera, et cetera. So this is the regional, but for the global, we use the IB trucks or Joint Typhoon Warning Center, okay? So I use the theme, Tropical Rainfall Measuring Mission data. This is a rainfall data, but now has a stop in 2015. Now we can use the GPM. GPM is like global precipitation measurement data. This is very high resolution data, like 0 0.25 into 0 0.25 lat long. So very high resolution. We also use the era 40 wind components. So in PhD, I use a Typhoon base track data from CMA. CMA is like China, Meteorological Association, or you can download from Shanghai Typhoon Warning Center. It's freely available. So you can use this. Uh, then use the global precipitation measurement GPM data from NASA. And for the rainfall and temperature data, I I have collected from the Bangladesh Meteorological Department because that uh, that study was based on the meteorological station. Okay. So real analysis data, we use the K convective available potential energy. Uh, relative humidity, temperatures are from the era interim. And for the ocean atmospheric data, like IOD, Indian Ocean Dipole, and so any low southern oscillation, any North Atlantic oscillation from Climate Prediction Center, Japan Agency for Marine Arts, Science and Technology, and from Li and Wang 2003. So they have provided this data. Okay, so can you hear me? Hello? Yes, Dr. Yes, yes, we can okay. hear you. Yes, oh, we can okay. hear you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Okay. All right. Oh, all right. So, yeah, uh, we have a lot of time. Don't worry. You can ask questions. So, today I will provide the research direction. Okay. So, if you have any questions, you can make note now. So, after the session, so I will give time to ask questions. Okay. All right. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Uh, then in MSC, what was the methodology? So for the rainfall events that occur within 500 kilometers from the tropical cyclone center are recognized as tropical cyclone rainfall, okay? And for the non-tropical cyclone rainfall, we use the tropical cyclone rainfall has been subtracted from the total rainfall. So if you uh, subtract the total, uh, yeah, sorry, TC rainfall from the total rainfall, you will find the non-TC rainfall. Then we calculate the tropical cyclone rainfall contribution, like how much TC rainfall contributed by, uh, in total rainfall multiply 100, okay? So this is like tropical cyclone rainfall contribution. And we also calculate the area impact. So how much area impact by tropical cyclone? We define the number of grids, okay? So over land impact by TCs, to all the land grids in the state area. So this is like the area impact. So how much area impact by tropical cyclone? And the ratio we calculated using the tropical cyclone rainfall accumulation divided by total rainfall, okay? So for the second paper, this is a paper one, the tropical cyclone rainfall. In the second paper, uh, I use the Fourier coefficients for wave number one. This is called the Fourier decomposition method to analyze the structure of TC rainfall asymmetry, okay? Because the rainfall sometimes, yeah, tropical cyclone rainfall is not symmetric, it's asymmetric. So we use the Fourier decomposition method. For the vertical wind shear, we define the difference between 200 to 850 hectopascal winds in an angular, angular region, like within 200 to 800 kilometer radius from the typhoon center, okay? And in my PhD, in the first paper, I use uh, uh, like machine learning and deep learning model to forecast the typhoon rainfall, but based on cluster, okay? So we use a clustering methodology to cluster the tropical cyclone. So I use a car clustering method known as the second order polynomial regression models. So this is a free toolbox in MATLAB, okay? So you can use this toolbox in MATLAB. It's freely available online. 
so it can cluster the tropical cyclone. So what is the main purpose? Okay, so main purpose of this model is to place the more similar trucks in the same group. Okay, then this model offers the best trade-off between the easy of interpretation and the goodness of fit. And we use a log likelihood values and some of square errors so to find the appropriate number of clusters. So from this figure, we can see the like square, uh, yeah, for like square brackets. So here you can see the noticeable diminishing returns of improvement in fit K uh, for is four. So if you can see the four is changing, but after four, cluster four, no change. So the appropriate number of cluster is four, but if you increase the five, six, seven, then you can split the same cyclones, like you can duplicate the cluster number. That's why we need to find, uh, we need to use the statistics like log likelihood values and some of square errors to find the best clusters. So in Western North Pacific, I was uh, the four clusters, okay? So from this figure, you can say in PhD, so I found the four clusters, okay? So here is a red circle is like Genesis point. So you can see the cluster A and cluster D is a straight moving cyclone. So straight mover. But if you can see the cluster B and cluster uh, C, the cluster are recurving because in the worst moving, uh, sorry, cluster uh, straight moving cyclones, they uh, tend to move westward. So they move westward and landfall in here, you can see. Yeah. But if you see the recover, first go to the northward, then recurve and accelerate in the eastward. So uh, if you cluster, then you can see the TC motion. So in globally, tropical cyclone has two motions, like one is straight movers, another is recurve. So some cyclones go, uh, go to straight move, they accelerate, they straight move, and some are recurve. Okay. Uh, so for the extreme rainfall indices, we uh, use like ETC, DDI, climate, uh, they have the climate indices. So you can see from there, the CDD is like the consecutive dry days, uh, consecutive wet days, precipitation total are 10 millimeters, 20 millimeters, 30 millimeters. So these are the definition from ETCCI. So this is a climate indices and here are the units. So this study focused only the statistically significant extreme rainfall indices over Bangladesh, including consecutive dry days, CDD, number of heavy rains, like R10 millimeters, the rainfall greater than equal 10 millimeters, the number of heavy rain days, like R10, 20 millimeters, the rainfall is greater than equal 20 millimeters within one to three months lead time, okay? So in this study, we implemented the HAM and Rao modified man, uh, man candle test to find the statistically significant trends, okay? In over Bangladesh, then we only found three indices are significant over Bangladesh. So we use three indices to focus within one to three months, okay? So I will show how you can calculate these indices freely, okay? There's the tools, so I'll provide them. Anyway, then <clears throat> I use a climatic water balance. What is the climatic water balance? So climatic water balance is monthly climate, I is means month, monthly climatic water balance is equal monthly rainfall subtracted the monthly pit. That means if you subtract potential evapotranspiration from monthly rainfall, then you will find the climatic water balance. So climatic water balance can give positive and negative values, okay? So if you find the positive values of climatic water balance, yeah, we'll provide the certificates, don't worry. So uh, the positive value of climatic water balance indicates the water surplus. That means it can have lead to extreme flood. So while if you find negative value of climatic water balance, that means can lead to the drought events, okay? So for the pet potential evapotranspiration, we use the thermite parameterization method because maybe some of the countries you will not find some data like solar radiation, et cetera, et cetera. So for the thermic parameterization, if you have just uh, station latitude, longitude and temperature data, then you can calculate the potential evapotranspiration. So it's the most robust and global use. So we use the thermic parameterization method for the paid potential evapotranspiration, okay? Uh, <clears throat>
Then we use shape for the machine learning. This is the very new method called shapely additive explanation. So if you want to know the feature importance, like the in random forest model, we can calculate the feature importance. But if you want to calculate the feature importance from support vector meshing, ADA boost, then deep learning model, so you can use the shape, shapely additive explanation, because the machine learning and deep learning model is something like a black box, OK? So what is going inside, you can't know, OK? So what is the impact of input variable on the output, OK? So that's why we use the shape, shapely additive explanation. So this is freely available in Python, so you can use that one. So you can calculate the feature importance. You can see the impact of input to the output, OK? Uh, then how can you select the input and output variables to the model, OK? So to find that one, we use a partial autocorrelation function. This is partial. You can also use the SCF autocorrelation function, but there is a a uh, difference between partial autocorrelation function and the autocorrelation function. So in partial autocorrelation function is directly, uh, you can see direct correlation from like current time to previous time. So there is no seasonal effect on it, but autocorrelation function, there are other correlations. So that's why we use the partial correlation function to see the direct correlation from current time to previous time. So that's why we use this one. So input current time, is a current time, but what is the lag? When you read some paper, uh, they said, okay, that we use the lag time. What is the lag time? Lag time is the previous time from the current time. So in our research, we found and the current time is directly correlated with the previous time. That's why for the typhoon rainfall forecasting model with the, even the climate, uh, yeah, so indices model, we use like current time to previous time as a model input. So T is the current time, then plus lead time. Lead means time means ahead of forecasting. So for the typhoon rainfall, I forecasted one to six hour ahead. But for the extreme rainfall indices or climate water balance, I forecasted one to three months ahead. So that means the lead time one to three months. For the other like PF, relative humidity and temperature and IOD, ENSO, NO, we also found the previous time is direct is uh, current time is directly correlated to the previous time. That's why we use uh, the pre current time and the previous time as the input. Then we progress. Okay. So, uh, how can you find the best parameters for the model? Because the parameterization is very important. Say, for example, in SBM models, support vector machine has three parameters like C, epsilon, and gamma. So how you can find, if you use a large value or small value, then it can have the great impact on the prediction, okay? So, so for example, in deep learning model, there are many parameters, learning rates, epoch, et cetera, et cetera. So every model has some parameters. So you need to find the best parameters for your data set. So it varies from data to data. So if you cannot find the best parameters, it can have great impact on the prediction results. So that's why we use a grid search cross validation method for this one. So in machine learning or deep learning, whatever we say, we use a data set, we split into training and testing data set, okay? Hello, can you hear me? Yes, yes we can hear you like that, yeah. Okay, so like, Sometimes you can talk, okay? Because uh, I feel there is no one, so I am just talking, huh? All right, so in machine learning, we, we split the data set into two data set, like training data and the test data, okay? Training data we use in the model, but for the test data, we separate from the model. We keep outside the model. So finally, we evaluate, right? Okay. So in training data, we use, uh, okay, so we training data, we use five-fold cross-validation. You can use 10-fold, whatever. So five-fold cross-validation, we split the training data into five folds, like fold one, fold two, fold three, four, five, okay? So then split one, we fold one use as a testing, 
and fold two to five, we use the training. So consequently, we use the this five. Then we found the best parameters, okay, for the data set. When we find the best parameters, then this is a grid search cross validation or randomized grid search cross validation. This is freely available in Python, okay? So you can use, when you find the best parameters, then you can retain the model. Then finally, you can evaluate with the test data that you use, uh, that you kept outside the model. So finally, you can evaluate the model uh, accuracy, okay? All right. So for evaluate the model performance, I use the four uh, statistics. So I use a root mean square error that is called the RMSC. Then I use a mean absolute error. Then I use the Nash Shutcliffe model efficiency coefficient that is called the NSC. I use the coefficient of correlation that is called the CC. Okay, so it's very common. We often use for the model uh, evaluation. Okay, so results like for the MSC, the first paper. So what I said, I will just show the key points. Okay, so in detail you can find in my paper. But finally, I will give you the direction. Okay, so one, the first paper, the rainfall contribution of tropical cyclones in the Bay of Bengal between 1998 and 2016 using the trim satellite data. The key points, like if you see. The tropical cyclone accounted for 8% on the total overland tropical cyclone from 1980 to 2016, and with a minimum 1% in 2011 here, and the maximum is 34, is 99, okay? So ratio, whatever I already discussed in the matter of ratio, the ratio by area impact, the area impact, whatever, how I calculated, I already talked in the methodology. So this is limited rainfall contribution over land was found from January to April. And in July, if you can see January to April, even in July. But... Uh, this is, yes, yes. Hello? All right, so <clears throat> where is the maximum tropical cyclone rainfall contribution over land was in November, December, May, and October, okay, like the first monsoon. So another key points, like in a stronger TC, heavier rainfall accounted for more percentage. If you can see the uh, PDF, PDF is like um, probability density function. You can see the higher, heavier rainfall, more percentage in the heavy rainfall, like extreme rainfall indices. So in the North Indian Ocean, we use the extreme rainfall indices, sorry, uh, sorry, extreme severe cyclonic storm, BC, uh, BSCS means the very severe cyclonic storm, SCS means severe cyclonic storm and the cyclonic storm. So this is like based on the maximum sustained wind speed, it's similar like tropical storm, hurricane, category one, two, three, uh, sorry? Ah, uh, someone is saying ours nahi array sounds no. That means someone is not hearing me. Maybe someone from Pakistan, right? We can hear you. Okay. Okay, so maybe he or she has the internet problem. Okay. Uh, another thing like when you talk in the like international platform try to use in english okay so no one is understand the urdu all right okay thank you so much so <clears throat> if you can see from the table uh there was little correlation bc between tropical cyclone contribution and tropical cyclone intensity that means sometimes we can see okay the extreme uh, tropical cyclone can have the extreme rainfall like uh higher intense tropical cyclone can produce the high uh, heavy rainfall, but it is not true. There was little correlation, okay? So uh, from there, you can see the last difference between the contribution CS, like uh, you can see the, the annual contribution for the, for the cyclonic storm is 3.6, but if you can see extreme rainfall 2.7. So. Uh, we, there is a little correlation between tropical cyclone rainfall contribution and TC intensity, okay? 
the for the second paper we uh, use the like we try to see the effects of vertical wind shear uh, and the storm motion on tropical cyclone rainfall asymmetries over the North Indian Ocean. So we use the Fourier decomposition method to see the extreme rainfall asymmetry. So in the color bar, you can see the positive and negative value. This is the normalized value. So the 0 0.7 means like 70% of extreme rainfall, positive extreme rainfall indices, okay? And this is a negative like up share or down share, whatever. The maximum TC rainfall asymmetry was predominantly in the down share left quadrant. If you can see the down share left quadrant was predominantly in the Bay of Bengal. This is a Bay of Bengal, so down share left quadrant, but while it plays to down share right quadrant in the Arabian Sea. So Bay of Bengal and Arabian Sea has difference, okay? So the rainfall asymmetry. And uh, if you can see the, the both basin, that magnitude of the tropical cyclone rate symmetry decline with TC intensity. So when the intensity <clears throat> uh, decline, the uh, also decline the asymmetry, but asymmetry increased with shear strength. When is shear strength is heavy, like uh, less than five meter per second, five to seven meter per second in environmental vertical wind shear, when is greater than seven meter per second, so then you can see the maximum rainfall asymmetry. So vertical wind shear has the impact, okay? So in the PhD, in the first paper, we published in the Journal of Geophysical Research Atmosphere. So we use an input faster West Typhoon rainfall forecasting model based on machine learning and deep learning models over the Northwestern Pacific Ocean. So you can see, these are five models, but from the five models, machine learning and deep learning, support vector machine shows the best performance with the grid search cross validation methods. So, because the support vector machine has a minimum, uh, sorry, minimize structure risk detection uh, principle in SBM model. So, if model gives some error, so model has parameters like C give the penalty. So, SBM model follow the risk minimization principle that has the strength of the SBM model. So, from our model, like cluster A, B, C, and D, I have compared with the previous studies based on the uh, in terms of predictive skills like nash shot clip efficiency. So if you can see that from the figure, our cluster A, B, C, so this is the lead time, like one hour at forecasting, two, six hour at forecasting. So our model has the um, like great performance, like the our model is better than other studies. So our efficiency almost like 96%, but they're like 30 to 40%. So this is one thing. And we also compare with the other studies with other statistics, like say, for example, RRMAC, average RMAC, modified RMAC, we compare. So these are previous studies, and this is our study, cluster A, B, C, D. So if you compare, like they use late time, some people use the one hour head forecasting, some use like two to three hours, and the there is no lead time, so just forecast it, okay? So if you can see the RRMSE, and from our model to other model, you can see the lower error for our case, but their case is higher error. So the focus model increases the efficiency of the forecast by 45 to 90% if you compare with the previous studies. So that's why our model is best because the mainly the limitation of the previous study was like the parameterization problem. Some people didn't use the parameterization, just assume the uh, model parameters that has great impact in the prediction. So in our case, we use the grid search cross validation method. This is the new method. We use the uh, this method to find the best parameters for machine learning and deep learning, then we forecast it. Even we use the partial autocorrelation functions to find the uh, input parameters then we focused so that is reason. then the second paper uh, that we we have seen the effects of learning rates and optimization algorithms on forecasting accuracy of hourly typhoon rainfall like experiment with convolutional neural network okay so if you can see this is one parameters like learning rate for the deep learning model if you can see when the learning rate is too high model cannot predict this the actual this is a prediction model cannot even if you use the lower value the learning rate so how fast model can run based on the epoch 
okay how much data you provide the computer so the learning rate controls the forecasting accuracy of hourly typhoon rainfall so the conventional neural network is unable to forecast hourly typhoon rainfall in terms of if it is too large or too small then model cannot predict okay so even if you can see we use the seven optimization parameters like AGDs, uh, st uh, stochastic gradient descent, root mean square propagation, adaptive uh, gra graph, then error delta, atom adaptive movement estimation, et cetera, et cetera. So even if you can see with the optimization parameter, if you use the uh, different optimizers for your model, even if you use the last learning rate, and the small learning rate, you can find the larger error than if you use a 0 0.1, 0 0.01, then 0 0.001. So if you, with this uh, learning rate, model can predict very well, but if you use a too small, too large or too small, then it has impact. So if you don't need to assume the, uh, like the prior learning rates by default, so you can test your, uh, a learning rate from your data. So you can, there is a uh, method like grid search cross validation for the deep learning. There is some cross uh, tuner. You can find the TensorFlow cross, this is Fiery. So you can find the best parameter for the deep learning model. So you don't need to assume or don't need to use the default value. So you, you need to find the best parameters for your data. Okay, then you, you predict. Uh, so we compare our uh, model performance with the previous studies. So uh, if you can see the previous studies, and if you can see the uh, NAC, not shot click efficiency, average RMSC, RMSC, if you compare with this uh, previous study with our results, so our result is better. So convolutional neural network shows more accurate forecast than the existing models, okay? So our models has improved the forecasting accuracy in terms of if we use the learning rate and optimization algorithm, if, if we use effectively, then our forecasting error can be reduced, okay? That was the second paper that is published in Arthur and Space Science, American Geophysical Union, okay? And the fourth, third and uh, yeah, third and fourth paper, okay, uh, we give it first try, okay, for the extreme rainfall indices, we propose this model because uh, previously there is some, uh, there are some observation studies, but there is no forecasting, the modeling study, so we gave a first try, so maybe in future you can is this proposed model and you can improve the results or so there is a still knowledge gap, you can at more thing, okay? So we give it the first try. So extreme rainfall indices prediction with atmospheric parameters and ocean activity connection using a random forest model. We focused on the Bangladesh, whatever you said in the methodology section. So the key points is like, uh, sorry, yeah. Key points, the proposed model is the best performance to forecast CDD at 10 millimeter and 20 millimeters only the antecedent of this indices input. So only if you use the indices input, then the model can forecast very well. But uh, if you use the teleconnection, atmospheric parameter on teleconnection, then uh, produces uh, larger error than only indices. So if you use the only indices, then lower error and higher efficiency and higher correlation, okay? So that is one thing. But if you compare with the atmospheric parameters and uh, teleconnection, we use the Taylor diagram. Uh, this is uh, the Taylor diagram you can freely produce in MATLAB. There is some MATLAB uh, file accents, okay? In Google, just search Taylor diagram, MATLAB file accents, so you can produce the Taylor diagram. But if we compare with, uh, if you compare between uh, like uh, ocean atmospheric teleconnection and the, uh, sorry, ocean atmospheric parameters and the teleconnection like IOD and so. So you can see from this here, from CDD forecasting, the C is like teleconnection. So teleconnection is uh, closer to observation, okay? But the atmospheric parameter is very far from the observation. So that means that for the CDD forecasting, so ocean atmospheric connection IOD and so are useful for CDD forecasting, but local atmospheric parameter is for R20 millimeters and uh, 10 millimeter and 20 millimeter, you can see the P is very close to the observation. So if you compare with the teleconnection, so they have the impact on this. So in future, you can also uh, improve this model 
ah, because we first gave a try with this one. So in future, we can extend this research. Okay, and the final paper, like the climate water balance forecasting with machine learning and deep learning models, whatever I said, I use a shape, shapely additive explanation. From this uh, uh, function, like shapely additive explanation, you can see what is going on inside the black box machine learning and deep learning model. You can see there's a shape value impact on the model output, the positive value, has like that increase the efficiency positive impact and negative means that there's a negative impact. So you can see the law, low value or high value, what is the impact? So it, we can see the climatic water balance current time has the maximum impact, low and high value has the maximum impact on the model prediction, like the maximum value has the highest impact on the model, but large value has the lowest impact. So from this figure, we can see what is the low value and high value can have the great impact on the model output. Here, this is the, the right one is the average, like a mean shape value, average impact on the output. If you can see the current time and the previous time of the climatic water balance has the great impact on the model prediction. But in Bangladesh for the data sets, the IOD, ENSO, NAO, uh, they don't have too much impact on the model prediction. So that's why, uh, you can see the results uh, for the prediction results. You can see the <clears throat> climate water balance like current time and previous time. They're very low error if you compare with the other like climate water balance or sorry, uh, atmosphere parameters or uh, teleconnection. And if you use this, the larger error and lower efficiency. So if you can see the all model shows if you use like uh, only climate water balance current time and previous time. So that is the, so we can see the consistency with this shape, how much impact on the model output. So you can see from the results. So also the SBM model shows the best performance for uh, like we use the uh, two climate zones. So climate zones in terms of antecedent climate water balance as an input, okay? So uh, the SBM model, if you can, if you can see, the SBM model effectively decreases the negative effect of increasing forecast lead time because when the lead time is increasing, like say for example, if you uh, forecast one month ahead or one hour ahead, then you will find the lower error. But when you increase the lead time, like two hours ahead or three hours ahead, then your forecasting error will increase. But in that case, so when the uh, lead time increase, the efficiency improvement of the climate, uh, decrease the negative impact. That means the improvement on the RMSC, NSC, CC for the SBM model as compared to random forest model or CNN or SBM model, okay? So in PhD, so thank you, wait. Okay, so implications. What is the PhD research? The, what is the implication like for the proposed typhoon rainfall forecasting model uh, is recommended as an alternative to the existing model for disaster prevention and mitigation because our model has increased the forecasting accuracy by 45 to 90% if you compare with the previous studies. Uh, so uh, then the second, the proposed extreme rainfall indices model, we, we gave a first try. So we propose this forecasting model may reduce the effects of extreme rainfall on ecosystem and human livelihoods, or we can use this one. And the proposed climate water balance forecasting model would help policymakers or practitioners to reduce the drought and flood in effects. In future, the MSC, the first paper, you know, the tropical cyclone rainfall contribution will help to identify the effects of tropical cyclone heavy rainfall on the lives and properties in the coastal region. And TC rainfall asymmetry study that use the Fourier decomposition method will help to identify the specific areas that will experience heavy rain by tropical cyclone. So as the coastal regions are affected every year by freshwater flooding, so our study pays attention for the quantity precipitation forecast. Okay, so before I finish, I want to provide how I, uh, you can analyze uh, the, you can analyze your data. So, okay, can you see my screen? Yes, yes, we are. Okay, so, yes, we can see. So yeah, in NCL, 
So in NCL, this is a free software. So you can use the NCL to, to make the figure like this is only the for tropical cyclone. If you can see, like from center, you can see this is figure from vertical velocity. So you can produce this figure from typhoon center or tropical cyclone center in NCL. You can also produce such kind of figure like uh, it's free online code. So you can see the from radius degrees, or that means 400 kilometers from the center. You can see the pressure, wind speed, or rainfall. You can see from such kind of figure. Even you can produce like this. From center to 300 or 400 kilometers, you can see the rainfall. Okay, so is this is an NCL figure? So you can use this NCL code. This is called uh, NCL regrading. Okay, so I'm giving the link in the chat. Don't worry. Even okay, so don't worry. NCL regrading. This is the NCL you can use for the climate indices. Okay, so you can use the Clean Pack 2. This is a free software you can search in Google. So you can use the uh, Clean Pack 2 to calculate the indices. Like there are a lot of indices, even you can produce the figure. All can be done with this software. Okay, this is a free, freely available in Clean Pack 2. So you can calculate these indices, okay, climate indices. Even you can uh, calculate the SPI or SPI for the drought, okay, for the drought like a standard precipitation index or a standard precipitation evapotranspiration index. So you can use this CLIMPAC2 software, this free, okay, so you can use this one. And for, <clears throat> okay, uh, for machine learning and deep learning, so from my first paper, you can find the link. Okay, so with code, Python code, there is a tutorial. So you can use this. Okay. Time series forecasting. So you can just click on this link. So Jason Brownlee, he has a website, Mastery, Machine Learning Mastery. He's my teacher. Uh, so I learn everything from his uh, online tutorial. Okay, it's freely available with Python code. So everything he explained is a plain language. Okay, and he provided the uh, Python code. So it's freely available. Okay, this is freely available. So you can use this one. And then you can see the code here. So how you can convert. So there is a Python code. You can see there's a Python code. It's freely available, okay? So you can just use for your research, but you need to understand the Python, okay? I have a Python lecture on YouTube, so you can learn from there. So there is a lecture, you can see with code, tutorial, okay? With Python code, it's freely available. Then, yeah. So you can find, in my paper, the Brownlee, okay, my machine learning mastery. So you can find the tutorial here, freely available, okay. This is the research direction. So you can freely use for machine learning, deep learning, and for the cyclone research, you can use the NCL. And the, for climate indices, you can use the CLIMPAC2, okay, so you can calculate. Uh, anyway, so uh, if you have now any questions, floor is open. Secretary. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jalal, for your insight. I hope the listeners have gained something from your presentation. I would like to pause maybe for the audience to take some maybe to ask questions or anything, because you are an expert, they can ask any question maybe you have not touched and they would like to understand. But also 
uh, they can also request you one of the program you can take online for training for the next winter. Maybe, never know. Okay. So I welcome members for any, any question, any clarification, if they, they, you have also. You can open your video so that the doctor can see you. Okay, another thing. Okay, before question, can I share another thing? Okay. Ah, uh, uh, for the research direction. So, another thing is when you finish your paper, you need to know how to publish, right? That's another challenge. So, another. I all already talk in the IMSHA a lot of time, but I have written a book. Okay. So this is called the scientific article publication from drafting to proofreading. It's freely available. Just click on it, download. Okay. So if you read this book, so if you read this book, you can know everything, how to draft, how to publish. Okay. So this is freely available. Even Imsha can arrange some talk next time, how to publish. Okay. So this is a free book, one thing. And second is like if you are new in Python, so this is another book. Python is freely available. Just click on it, okay? And the NCL, this is my mother. <laughs> I love the NCL, okay? The most powerful. Uh, so I uh, advise or recommend to use NCL instead of grass. Why? Because NCL is most powerful, one thing. Second thing is NCL have thousands of scripts online freely available, okay? So you don't need to write your own. So if you know the basics, then you can use a lot of codes already in NCL. That is the one thing. So I recommend or whatever advice, use NCL instead of GRASH, okay? From this, my experience. Okay, thank you so much. Now floor is open. One set, Masum Billah. Uh, course for us so we can learn from like programming. Okay, most welcome. Uh, any programming, Imsha can errands, no problem. Okay, secretary, now. Uh, thank you, Dr. Jamal. Uh, I have seen some text be be before maybe someone can call. Uh, there are some texts in the chat. Maybe you can uh, make your reaction. One you have already reacted on the training. So paper, paper, paper link, I think. Paper link. Uh, I didn't get you. The guy uh, is asking about would you please share your paper link? I already sent in the message. Mm. Set. I already sent my already sent the link. Okay. You see? Yes, yes. Yeah, yes. I already sent the link. Everything is there in my yes. link. And another one, maybe this one you can give an explanation. Uh, uh he's saying yes, and the one which we can calculate SPI and spare. Mm -hmm. Anything you can uh, react on this one? SPI and spare? SPI or SPE, you can use the clean pack too. Okay. So, this pack. is a free software. I already give you the. Uh, okay. so just search in Google Clean Pack Two User Guide. You'll find the PDF. So everything is in explain with this PDF file is freely available online. But you need to use the R platform. Okay. Oh. Okay. 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 Right. Yeah, R platform. So this is freely available. Just search in Google Clean Pack Two. You'll find the user guide PDF. It's freely available. It is very easy, but however, if you have any still problems, so you can just email me or text. Yeah, no problem. I think Bila, Bila Masum, Masum has a request. Maybe this one you have already answered. I think so. Yeah. The last one. Yes. Yeah, Imsha can arrange. Yes, yes. So now I would like to, to if you can hear, you can ask direct questions. Members, you can ask a question. Yes, sir. I have that question. <laughs> yes, I Mr. love that question. I, I would like to um, discuss also. I would like to share 
contributions and knowledge about the tropical cyclone also. The, Sorry? I also the writing the paper the last month. Mm -hmm. I already written in the, it currently and are reviewing. Uh, I also study on the Bay of Bengal region the, because uh, my study is uh, Eastern Bay of Bengal region about the monsoon, the whole monsoon system. Mm -hmm. So the I would like to finding the relationship with the, this cyclone uh, on the VOB and Arabian Sea, uh, sorry, uh, Edmund Sea, uh, VOB region, cyclone and the monsoon onset and the withdrawal date. Uh, well, after the I write in my research, uh, it shows that those cyclones uh, before the onset date, main onset date is uh, impact to early onset. But the, after the main onset date, it occur in after the main onset date, it is the delay to the most onset. So the maybe I think that I found the, your your paper or also I already read the, your paper for my previous research. So could I the combining with the those your your formula? And the mine motion also definition formula, so the it can be get the exactly answer for this scenario. Okay, so you want to combine my method to your research. You want to make collaboration, or what you want to like to get? Yes, now I'm the deploying my method for monsoon uh, monsoon focus. Monsoon yeah. focus, monsoon focus. Okay, so what so do the, you want from me? Your the your your equation. Okay. <laughs> we can because that you use a machine learning, right? I also use the machine learning for uh -huh. the my equation. Mm -hmm. So it should be the combining, I think. Because at which platform do you use the mainly for coding? Okay, so you want to use the machine learning model to forecast the monsoon rainfall or something like that? Yeah, yeah, yes. Okay, so uh, what is your time scale? Now the my time scale is uh, I use the previous 40 years and uh, refocus for 10 years. No, it's okay, 10 years or 14 years, but I'm saying the time scale, like, you, do you want to focus on short scale, like hourly or daily? Oh, or yes, uh, for, for the scale is uh, only the synodic scale. Okay, finity scale, but what is the time scale? The time scale is uh, one month. One only month. One month. Okay, only yeah. one month. Okay, so this is a time series forecasting, so you can use like Jason Brownlee, he has the online tutorial in Python. I already shared. So you can use that one. Even if you have a still problem, then you can ask me. Okay. okay. Yeah, the tutorial, uh, yeah, the I'm tutorial really already in Python Python also. online. Yeah. So if you have any questions, so you can ask me. So I can help you. No, no problem. Yeah. But okay. before you use, okay, so I have some advice. Yes. For the prediction i didn't say a lot of things because if i want to talk the five papers maybe five days because one paper has a lot of things right that's why i just talk only the key points and the key methods okay so before you go any field or any data in my training i always said La, know your data know your data know your data right it doesn't mean the background in data science i often say know your data. So if you have the time series data, maybe temperature, rainfall, or any other data, whatever, before you use in model, you need to clean your data first. That is, we call the data cleaning. So in my experience, if you have the time series data, time series data often has three. Okay, can I share the screen? So if you search in Google, this is called seasonal decomposition 
Python, okay? Even you can find in my paper. So seasonal decomposition, seasonal decomposition. Oh. Ah, depression. Oh, sorry, decomposition. Okay. Decomposition. Ah, this one maybe. Yeah, but. Yeah. Okay, so I'm giving the link. So in the time series data, we have three components like trend, season, and residual. So what is the season means? The seasonal effect in time series data. So time series data, you will find some repeated company. Uh, like components, like this is called the seasonal effects. You'll find the same, you can see the cyclic, same repetition yes. in the data. Yes. So if you use directly this data to the model, model cannot predict very well. Even interesting thing, if you use a man candle trend test, you cannot find the significant, statistical significance. You will be disappointed, hey, what is my data? I am not getting the significant results. What I have? I had, I had experience. I use a model, model cannot predict. So that is the problem. Even when I use the statistical methods like man candle train test or other statistics, then model. So in that case, you need to test whether your data is uh, like has seasonal uh, component or like this. So we can use many uh, method how to test this one. So in my paper, I already described uh everything like in my second paper i already described this one uh effects of learning rates yeah this one maybe in the second paper i already described so there are some statistics so you can use and you can test your data before you put in the model okay uh yeah ADF test and KPSS test. So this is free in Python, okay? Available in Python, you can test also. This is called the augmented DK Fuller test. So you can test your data if it has any seasonal uh, effect. So if you have the seasonal effect, so you need to remove the seasonal component and the residual, like the error. We often say outlier, you know the outlier, okay? So there's some error from the data. So I know clean, you just use the trend, then uh, your model can predict very well. So you need to test this one. One thing, then you need to see the outliers. You can test some normality test. Another thing, uh, before you uh, give to the model, you need to use the partial autocorrelation function. What, whatever I already said in my uh, discussion, you can use the partial autocorrelation function. So you can see uh, in this paper, so you can see on the... Maybe in this paper. Oh, sorry, because I'm using outside of the university. So from there I can show. Yeah, like this. So when you use the partial autocorrelation function, so you can select your input data. So you need to select the input for your model, so you need to test the partial autocorrelation function. These are current time is directly correlated with the previous time. So for your data, you need to test, then you can find the appropriate input, then you can use the forecasting. And another important thing is you can, you need to find the best parameters for your data. So you can use the uh, grid search cross validation method. So you can use, uh, this method is freely available in Python. I already provided the link in my paper, so you can use the Python, okay? So find the best parameters. So this is the like recommendation or advice, whatever you say, before you use the model, use this. Another, you can use Chef. 
Shapley additive explanation is free labeling in Python. So you can see what is going on in the black box machine learning model. It's machine learning is like a black box. You're giving the input, you are getting the output, but what is going inside? So you can use the Shapley additive explanation so you can see the effects of input. So you can link up, so you can explain the science, why this input has the impact on the output, okay? Okay, this is an interpreter. Uh, any other questions? Yeah. Uh, yes. Uh, okay. Dr. Jar, thank you for the encountering the questions and answering them. But there is one here you can uh, suggest it to this Bira. Uh, he's asking, how did you select your research topic in your master's degree? Like if someone is not having a specific skill from his or her bachelor degree, and he doesn't know how to start his research in a particular field. So how or she can select the, that research topic? He wants to cut to get you oh, a talk in the Imsha. I can give you the link, my talk, my YouTube channel. So don't worry. I already had this talk. I know this is <laughs> because I started from the beginning. So I know I know the challenges. So that's why I made this YouTube channel for helping the other people. Okay. So in the playlist, in the playlist, uh playlist, 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 playlist. Uh, maybe recent stock. No. Wait. There is a talk. This is the five secret steps for selecting a research topic or field. How to choose research topic. That was, you know, the CSS, Computer Electronic Software Society in Newest. They arranged this program. Yes, yes. Yeah, okay. So, okay. okay, let me share the link. Oh, sorry. Sorry, sorry, maybe this is the wrong. Wait. Sorry. Okay. This one. <clears throat> So I think if you see this video, you will not have the question, but if you have a still question, you just email me, okay? Oh, okay, thank you. If there is any question from the audience, please, you can, uh, you can ask the doctor. Any, any question or apart from what he has already talked, you have something you would like to get some explanation, then you can ask. Because next time I'll be very busy. So this is the time you can ask. <laughs> yeah. So I, I, I think... Uh, Hello, Dr. So. Jalal. Yeah, Zabed Iqbal. So can you open your camera? Yes. And please, before asking a question, it's better to give your uh, self-introduction so I can know you. Okay. okay. My name is Javed Iqbal and uh, I'm from Pakistan doing yes. a PhD in remote sensing and geomatics engineering school here in Nanjing. Okay. New East. Mm -hmm. My question is, uh, uh, I'm just uh, starting the research uh, uh, by coming here. Uh, I, I didn't publish yet. So uh, I'm uh, curious and wondering about, uh, uh, first I was wondering about selecting the research direction 
which I somehow uh, narrowed down to it uh, to like uh, uh, ecosystem services. Mm -hmm. So uh, there now uh, I face a problem of uh, selecting the data. Uh, mm -hmm. I just uh, want you to explain me or guide me uh, regarding uh, the selection of a data for a partic particular application. Uh, how uh, how can uh, we we select uh, the suitable data? Uh, how can we get to it? Uh, whether uh, uh, is, is it the only way to to just look for the uh, uh, literature review, uh, keep on reading about it, and then get to know, or uh, is there some other way so that uh, I, I I get a specific uh, and required data, and uh, then uh, start working on it? Okay, very good question. So yeah, you are right. So my suggestion will be to read the good paper okay there is some rubbish paper don't read who is beginner you will find a lot of papers but my suggestion you need to know your journal first you need to know your research researcher from your background okay and you need to see the very good scientists from your field which journal they choose to publish so always see the high rank journal because you don't need to read the shit, bullshit paper, no. Okay, for my case, I always prefer nature journal, nature climate change, or journal of geophysical research atmosphere like American Geophysical Union, or American Meteorological Society, or Royal Meteorological Society, or some uh, paper from Elsevier or Spinger. That is very high rank, I know, from my field. So from that uh, particular very good paper, if you read some one or two, you can see the data and method. This section is very important, okay? So in the high rank journal, always they provide the data link very well, even with code. If you see the nature journal, they also provide the code or at least the direction. So for example, uh, if I share my uh, paper that is published in Journal of Geophysical Research Atmosphere, this is a very top journal in my field. So you can see in the data and method, Though I, I already provided some link, but there is also another section, data availability, if you go down. So it depends on the journal style. So here you can see the data availability. So you need to read the paper structure in, from your journal. It depends on journal to journal, but mostly in the data and method section, you will find the link for data sets. This is one thing. Here, say for example, SBM Render Forest, I already provide the link. So if you go there, you will find the model. Then the for tropical cyclone data, I provided the link. Then rainfall, I provide the link. Even sometime you need to provide the code link. One thing, but sometimes if you are still confused about the data, so it's the best way to find the author's email. Okay? So you can find the corresponding author email in the paper, right? But in reality, you know, the corresponding author often the professor, right? So professor is the supervisor. He will not do the analysis, okay? He's your supervisor. So it's best to find the first author address in Google you search and find his or her email. In the polite way, find your specific question, okay? So you can ask in the research gate, or maybe in the email, you can ask very well, you can introduce yourself, okay, I am Javid Iqbal, I am a PhD student, at this, this, I read your paper, you can mention the which paper you read, okay, I read your paper, I found interesting, and you can sometimes, you need to appreciate the authors, okay? So this paper is very good work, okay, you can use some adjective, so it is for the authors, okay? I found your paper is very interesting. You have uh, done a great job, oh, like, like, like this. But am I am a beginner, or you can say I'm interested in this research field, or whatever, I'm the very beginner in PhD. I want to do further research in this field, but I have some questions about the data or maybe the method. So my question is like this. So you need to ask the appropriate way. You can ask in ResearchGate, or you can send an email, then of course, 
the authors are busy, but after two days or three days or one week, you must get the reply. Okay, so by this way, you can know your data very well. Then you can download. Because in my field, I have suffered the data problem. What I said for time series data, I couldn't get the statistical significance. When I use my data in machine learning model, model cannot predict. So what was the behind? Then I learned, okay, the time series data has some three components. I need to check the seasonal component and like the outlier, et cetera, et cetera. So if you ask the author or if you read very well, then you will find the data latent. So when you know your data, then you can start your work. That is the best way. Thank you, Dr. Jalal. Uh, that's why I asked because I already faced this problem. Uh, I was working later on. I faced this data availability problem. At the end, I needed some uh, ground readings which I couldn't get from the department uh, at the meantime. So now I'm again uh, starting to work on a paper. So I'm that's why curious about uh, finding and getting data first in hand. Uh, then starting uh, on the research yeah that is the good thing another thing like in our field uh is better to know the python code say for example the era interim provide some data or from the you are from the remote sensing field okay sometimes yeah. your data like in zip format or t format, format t yeah. format or maybe the shape file uh is better to have the net cdf format because net CDF format is, uh, is much easier than chef file or etc. Et but it depends on the data source. So it's better to know how to download because when I was beginner, I downloaded the data one by one. It took me a long time because in a tropical cyclone is not the regular data. It's not regular. So maybe in the October, only three or four days data. In September, five or seven days. So you need to download one by one. But in every data source, you will find some technique. Maybe you can download, use Linux platform, Linux terminal, okay? Like Seguin or Ubuntu. So you need to know how to download. You need to format. You can use the text file, the data download link, and how to combine in terminal. So you just put one command, then it will automatically download one by one. But if you download manually, it will take a long time and a long process. Another thing I found in the remote sensing, sometimes your data is five minutes interval or maybe 10 minutes interval. Okay, so it's a large data. So how to combine them? So there is another challenging. This is the challenging for the beginner. So my advice would be to run very well on this data source and find the technique. Don't try to download manually. Okay, take time, maybe seven days, but fix your problem. If you can find your solution, then you can enjoy. Say for example, now I have Python code, era interim data or NCP data from the NASA. I have a code now Python. So I just run the code. I don't need to worry how many years I need to download. Just run and download it. Okay, sometimes you can use the IDM. IDM is Internet Download Manager. This is very fast compared to terminal. If you use the Linux terminal, it takes long time to download. So it's better to use the IDM, Internet Download Manager. So many things you need to know, then you can enjoy your life. Otherwise, it's very difficult. Whatever I said from 2017 to 2020, 23, I, I never go back home. I was in Nanjing, even in the winter, in the summer vacation, I didn't enjoy. Even in the weekend, I was in the lab and run these things. Then you can enjoy. And before finishing my PhD, I got the postdoc. Anywhere in South Korea, other places, then I came here. Before getting the PhD certificate, I'm doing postdoc. Okay. So maybe in future, very soon, I will go to China again. Anyway, this is the height. <laughs> so you thank can you. Ah, thank yeah, you. Thank you, Dr. Jalal. We would love to see you here again. Yeah, okay. <laughs> uh, thank you. Uh, oh, another Jamal. question. Another question from computer science. He uh, mm -hmm. said, okay, I'm good at Python, machine learning, deep learning. How can collaborate? Okay. 
you know python and machine learning whatever if you fit with my research interest so you can just visit my website and see my interest so you can match with your field then most will come no problem oh okay thank you thank you uh, i think we have uh, uh, only 25 minutes to finish up this session if there is any any addition question from the members please before we wind up okay don't worry about the time but if you have a specific question i want to help you here because every day i i don't have time to give you so today yes. i have time so if you yes. have still have question i can increase the time don't worry okay, okay. but ask the specific question Okay, yes. So the audience, you you can hear, you can ask any question. Uh, just apart from the presentation, if you have anything you, you want to share or you want to ask, you want to get more clarification from the doctor, then you can uh, air out your, 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 your issue. Welcome, okay, members. I'm giving my uh, WeChat because you are in China. So this is my WeChat ID. Even you can talk ni hao, we shamma. Okay, it will be helpful. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay, if you have, don't have any questions, so maybe we can go forward. Yes, I think I think questions now are over. Maybe the members. If you cannot talk, then you can even write. Yeah. <laughs> you can even write to the message chat. But without but Chinese. Yes, yes, yes. In English. English. Wa bujidao. Chungo. Ting dong, ting dong. Yes, doctor. Yeah. Thank you very much for the job. Sorry. Uh, thank you very much for the work. Uh, my issue, my question is that. Uh, you talk once again about the the data download, the use of the IDM and the Python code, which you talked of that you already have, and because data the attention can become a menace. Data download, I mean. Uh, I already have some talk on my YouTube channel. You can find the data download, climate data download. So maybe you can go there. And it's very easy to download, but it's technical. For sure, it's very technical. Uh, we have three review papers to do this semester. What do you think? I need to focus on one domain or two, three, and uh, need your guidance writing three review paper. Okay, you have three review paper, means you can. Uh, what does it mean, the domain? Review paper is, I think, means one topic. Yeah, always is better to focus on one topic. If you focus, like, if you concentrate on one thing, you can give 100% concentration. But if you consider on three things, your concentration will be divided by three. So it's better <clears throat> to focus on one thing. And it's better choice to talk to your if you I, I don't know your your master's or PhD student. Ikra Joino. Okay, if you are a master's student, if and you have the supervisor, it's better to talk to your supervisor. Say, for example, 
your supervisor is interested on rainfall and enso maybe but you are focusing on monsoon then there will be conflict so it's better to ask the supervisor first i want to do to this and what you want when there will be agreement is better to focus on this thing but if you don't have supervisor in masters so it's better to think which domain say for example uh, monsoon or rainfall and so which background are you good at or if you have the ex ex skill or expertise is better say for example uh uh i didn't so i am not talking about this but i wanted to know my class teacher said to write a review paper instead of exam okay instead of exam so you just write to if you focus on monsoon or rainfall or enso what i'm saying which one you are interested in it okay you are interested in median julia uh, julian oscillation is it mjo is median julian oscillation right so if you are interested on median julian oscillation then you go for what so you don't have to focus on monsoon or other things so you just better focus on mjo you can uh, connect with the rainfall or monsoon whatever but it depends on your interest okay don't waste your time so uh, in my presentation three review paper on same topic is okay uh, this is like the exam okay this is like the exam so you need to write the uh, just review paper to get the mark so one or three paper is enough okay this is just reporting like you will write some report it's not like uh, you will publish a paper you need to read the lot of papers and write literature not like that so you can use only two or three papers read very well and write a good report like from my report i showed i published two papers as a first author so i was interested in like the drought and the climate extreme then i said to professor in the class teacher i am interested in this topic but i want to publish then he said okay he guided me then finally we published from the course teacher from the course paper i published two papers okay thank you so much and he said what saying uh I'm a beginner. I only have physics background. I have never been into in a meteorological field to work. Now I am masters in meteorology. I'm finding it challenging to get a clear picture of where to start of the analyzing data forecasting some aspects related to the field. What would be your advice? Okay. So if you are very new, my first advice to learn the programming. That is the most important thing. Ah, uh, how should I say? I, maybe I cannot explain with English very well. When I came to China in newest, especially especially in newest, when I go to my professor room, professor always said, "Hey, Zhao, you cannot do work in the same field." My Chinese student published two papers, three papers. You cannot do things. What you did in Bangladesh? what do you have la, 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 things so maybe one year i was afraid if i see my professor i just go away i don't want to see him i am in very challenging he said you just plot one cyclone track you know the cyclone track cyclone track you plot in ncl 6 months i cannot so in the beginner what i did and most of the beginner do search in google and find some course and directly run without understanding and getting the error error that happens for the beginner even i did 
Even the beginner just want to plot the figure and maps, don't want to run. Even many of the beginners just ask me, provide your code. In the IMSA class, in the LCL class, I just provided the code. They, are, they were interested on the code. They were not interested on the learning. That is the problem. So how can we start? When I found NCL and MATLAB, NCL is based on Photon and C. MATLAB is based on C. So how we can start the programming language? Learn one programming language very well. If you learn MATLAB, just learn MATLAB first. If you want to learn NCL, just learn NCL first. If you want to learn Python, just learn Python. If you know one language very well, then you can understand everything. Just other language use the another syntax, but the same idea. So in programming, there are three things. If you can master, then you are the master in programming and you will not suffer. Number one, array management, array, array. I'm talking about the computer science now, array management. Array management is data customization. That is very important. Say for example, we use the CDO, climate data operator for NetCDO file, right? I didn't hear, I didn't hear, I haven't heard this NetCDO name when I was in Bangladesh. When I came to China, then I, oh, there is NetCDO file. I didn't, didn't know that. This type of data, you cannot see like Excel or CSV file. <laughs> Excel or CSV file, but in, if you know the CDO, you can break the file. Okay, you can see everything from that file. You need to know your data, know your data. So error management is very important first. Like you know, the hourly data, you need to convert daily or monthly. How to do that? In a CDO file, you have long, long years. So how to select one year or a specific case? If you have the data in Excel file, Excel file one, one column, but you want to do shape is a monthly or yearly. Say for example, when I did SPI calculation, SPI, Standard Precipitation Index, I use one meteorological station. My data was in Excel file. I took seven days. My eye was like, I cannot see very well because I did manually copy, paste, cut, paste, cut, paste. But now I know there is a function, reshape. You just use the reshape, one line. You can reshape your data, but you don't know. So error management, the first thing, data customization. Second thing is looping, loop. Like MATLAB use for loop, for end. Python also use the for end. For loop is a C programming. NCL use do and do. Maybe graphs also use the do and do. So do and do is a program loop. Maybe you have 30 years data. If you do one by one, it will take long time. That's why you use the loop. Loop means your data you are tying with rope. For I is equal like this. One to 30, 30 years data, do, do, do like this. One minute you can do, but if you don't know six months. Second thing is conditional statement. If, end if, if, else if, while. So if you know three things, error management, then loop and conditional statement, you are master. So my advice would be first learn any programming language very well from the beginning. Then you go for plotting is not a big deal. If you have the results, you can plot. Even you can plot in Excel. Data analysis, this is very important thing. So my suggestion would be learn any programming language first. What I did in Nanjing, when I knew, okay, I have no way without learning computer programming. Then one year has passed. I didn't see the professor. If I go to the professor, hey, fellow, what are you doing? There is no output. What are you doing here? 
I didn't see to professor. I was so afraid. I was fear. Then I sit down and learn the photon and see. Then he started learning Python, MATLAB. Then now I good. Can you imagine after one year, I could produce Typhoon truck, Cyclone truck figure. They are, then I was very happy. Yeah, I know the code now. I can produce. I was so happy. So this is a real story. Because from 2018, 2023, I taught many lectures on NUIST. I talk in IMSHA and other platforms. So I know the problem. I know the challenges of the beginner. That was mine. So my advice would be to learn this. When you know this programming, then you can go <clears throat> for the analysis. Any field, any field. Okay, who has the question? Uh, Mone Conte or, okay, sorry for the wrong pronunciation. So are you happy with my answer? This is a real story. Yes, we are happy. Okay, another person has sent me question directly to me in Bangla because he's from Bangladesh maybe, some of my brother. Masum Billah, he said, okay. He said, if someone doesn't have professor, so how will he start with the research? So for example, in master's or bachelor, often we don't have professor, right? But in PhD, we have a professor. So if you don't have professor or supervisor, whatever I said, you should learn the programming first. Any programming first learn. Don't go away, don't search in Google. How to plot this figure? How to plot this figure? Don't search in Google. Just take two or three months or six months to learn one programming. Any Python or MATLAB or NCL, just learn one, then you will be happy. I'm telling you, you'll be happy. Then you can produce figure. Like I was very happy also, I can produce. This is the most challenging. If you have the results, you can write paper. Okay. Okay. Next question. Thank you. Okay, on there. Yes. IPhone, iPhone, continue. Yeah, secretary, if you have any question. Uh, I was welcoming for the audience if they have extra questions. I see some, some are sending messages to yourself. I think you, in your WeChat, you can also continue maybe. Now, no problem. There is a... we'll accept. Yeah, some people have sent the WeChat. No risk, I will reply. Okay. I think you uh you went to my mail I think they have finished the questions also um questions. Uh we can wind up if we, we can allow you to make a conclusion to what we have done for today. If you have anything to add, apart from what you have already talked, Dr. Jalal, then we can close up the, 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 the session. Anything you would like to add advice? Hello? Hello? <clears throat> Yes, if we, I think members have finished to ask questions or getting some clarifications from yourself. 
then we can give you the time for me to wind up to make a, a, the final touch. If you have anything to add or any advice to us for the investors, then we can welcome you and then we can close the session. Uh, another okay. one sent one and one message. He said, uh, probably one other right now. I'm in a session from our Vegas University. My senior, I could have any kind of Okay, someone is from my bachelor institution. What I did in Bangladesh, Kudurakali Science and Technology University. He is also uh, from there and he is doing. Masters at Bangladesh Agricultural University. He's interested in heavy metal pollution, soil, water, sediment, etc. etc. Okay, very good. Best wishes, but I don't have interest on this field. It doesn't match with my research. But if you have any question related to data analysis or other things, but I can guide you, whatever. Because in data science, we don't consider which field, we just consider the data. That's the thing. So if you have any question or like programming, data analysis or publication related, so you can ask, no problem. Yeah, I will help. <clears throat> and another thing, I will have the same talk in Bangladesh on December 3. So I will talk in Bangla. So don't worry, you can participate there. We can talk the own language. <laughs> so you will have opportunity. Ah, in December 3, I have talk in Bangladesh. So, yeah. Yeah, Mr. President. Yes, yes, yes. yes. I think uh, uh, maybe I would like to also pose the, the invitation for the one of the programming, especially NCLO. Mm -hmm. If you can offer the, your, your time for us, then you can take uh, one session in the next winter. No problem. Uh, yes. No problem. Okay, thank you very much for your readiness. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, Mr. President, if you have uh, anything to speak, then uh, you are welcome. Yes, uh, no, it's not uh, for the, it's only for attendance uh, from the INSA. Uh, INSA members, uh, please bring your uh, activity card to the Secretary General to make the stamp because uh, we didn't notice in the group because the same guys can cheat on this. So only that we will give the only the participant today only. So the please bring your activity card to the general secretary rooms. Okay. The, we will collect and then the, we will stamp on it. Then we will revit at okay, so the certificate the, it will be take a time. So Dr. Jala will be arranged for that. Yes. Okay, Mr. President, some people attended from outside Noish, so you can give them a link to register or maybe already registered. So they have participated in the talk. So they need to get the certificates, right? So how can they get the certificate? Outside from Noish? Yes, sir. Uh... Currently, they are arranged uh, by email. By email, uh, we will contribute their certificate by email. Yeah, Masum Billah already talk. If you are not uh, IMSHA member, so uh, what about those who are not in China? Okay, that is not in China. So we can send the certificate through email, okay? So you can register. Maybe you have already registered, or if you have any link, you can give here. So can give their information. Or maybe you can give your email, Mr. President, so they can send the information and you can send the certificates.
Yes, Mr. President, if uh, you have anything to say on that one, because uh, some attendees are outside uh, China and would like to provide the certificate to them. Now, how can we get the contacts of these guys, especially email? I think that in this room, they already register before the event. So the, I already had their email. Because uh, today, the, the Zooming is only the contribute by email. So I think they, they are less in, the, in my hand. So I will contribute all the registration participant. For the, uh, we will contribute by email these certificates. Okay. Okay, I'll go to you. Uh, we thank you, Dr. Jalal, uh, for your time, for the insightful. You have actually done your party for us, and we are happy that we can still access your time and get your knowledge up to this moment. I think one of the alumni of NUST, you are the one who are who is very active to 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 NUST, and we still enjoy your your knowledge, and we hope that you love NUST, you love the people of NUST, and you will continue to be with us and to assist you. Where if we get time, when, when we ask you for your time, then would like also to see you again next time. And uh, we shall keep contact with you, and uh, not just for today, but we shall continue to acquire your knowledge. We thank you for your time, and we thank you the audience, those who joined this session for today. Uh, please, when we call for another session, uh, be ready and then get prepared for the good of university and for the good of yourself also for the actually uh, being good expert in our field. We know it's not just meteorology, even those who are coming from computer science, also they have joined with us. So you have something to, 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 to do with yourself. So we thank you, uh, Dr. Jalal. Uh, we thank you, the audience, for your time. Uh, we can say I uh, would like to give you, Dr. Jalal, uh, at least some three minutes uh, to speak uh, lastly and say bye to the audiences, if you can hear me. Yes, I'm hearing. So I already talked a much, OK? So I don't want to talk any more, but first three things. Uh, in newest, in the newest life, so students are not careful. Okay, what I have seen five years in newest, they just want to go to IMSHA or AAD or CES, just go to program to sign or getting the stamp in the activity card. This is very bad. So you don't need to go to IMSHA AD to signing the activity card. This is only for the CIS. It will not help you anymore. Okay. Just go to the IMSHA or other places, just see your face and just signing. No, this is not good. Don't waste your time. Okay. Don't waste your time. Whatever you feel, just focus on it and try to learn from the basic. Programming is must. Programming is must. Programming is must. No way. Okay? No way. There is no shortcut way. Just sit down. Just take two months. Just listen to my word. Just two months. Or maybe you can watch my lecture on YouTube, Python. It's very new. Or NCL. Just sit down two months. After learning two months, you will happily enjoy your life in Nuist. Okay? First thing, don't go to 
IMSHA or AD or other places just signing your activity card or getting the stamp, number one. Number two, learn programming language. Hard thing, you are not Chinese. Maybe you will not be uh, many times in Chinese. Yeah, you need to pass the Chinese, I know. But for the passing, but most of the people focus on Chinese learning and pass. Focus on your research. Yeah, by the, if you have time, then just pass the SSK. You need to get the 180. Don't try to get 250, 280. You don't need to be fast, A plus, not like that. Just pass 180, as finish. Most of the people spend a lot of time. Not like that. Say, for example, my classmates in PhD classmates is still doing PhD in newest. But before finishing my PhD, I am doing postdoc. Maybe I will go for another postdoc. Or more the faculty, my classmates is still doing PhD in newest. So I didn't focus on this thing. Just go to IMSHA, AD, they're signing. No. I didn't waste time. I learned programming. And the third thing, yeah, I try to learn the Chinese. There is a need for the passing marks. I don't need to get the A+. Plus. Even you will get 280 or 290 out of 300. China will not give you the citizenship. Will not give her the peer. This is not America, man. You will get the peer. If in Australia, Canada, and America, then that's fine. You learn the language, you will get the job. But this is China. Whatever you do, they will not give you the citizenship. So what you need to be so serious on this language? Right, doctor, you are right. Okay. <laughs> so this is three things. You remember? And if you follow, you must contact me. Yes, yeah, Zalal. Now my life is easy. This is the reality. Sir. Okay. <clears throat> That's the last mm -hmm. talk. Yeah. So if someone uh, learn Chinese well, uh, he or she will get a job in China. <laughs> it's very difficult. Is there any chance? It's very difficult, maybe sometime it's allowed for a student in restaurant or sometimes just if you have the economic problem, but it will not help you too much to get the other jobs. Like in America, if you know the language very well, then you will get a lot of la 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 la, but no. It's, it's like Thingbogong, it's Puhao. Like say for example, I don't know Chinese, but still I have offer in China job. For job. What they want, even in USA, I have some offer. Now, because I, I came to Korea, I have offered in from USA even. Any other country I have offered because I have the background, I have the research skills. In the last week, I had an interview in China. They want to take me as another postdoc or other positions. They didn't ask me how much you got from Chinese language. Nothing. Did you get my point? Yes, okay. yes, yes. Thank you so much. Yeah, that is my last. <laughs> Uh, th thank you, thank you, Dr. Gerard. We appreciate what you have said, and that is a tendency of just attending somewhere and getting a, an activity card being stamped. Is, uh, I think now we will change our mind because uh, the investors uh, will hunt just for that activity card. Always, the first day we'll ask, you, Can I get a stamp to my activity card? We call me stamp, so we are not just here for. The, the activity card. Thank you for your words. I think if someone can hear You know, them, in every semester, maybe one year, you only have maybe seven activity, right? On the stamp, right? Maybe seven. Maybe yeah. seven. 
So you can easily yes. get one year or two years, two years only seven activity card, seven is done. So why you need to 20 or 25? Some people, every, like their Unostan, domestic affairs department, they are showing some like something on what you do in dormitory. You are spending time the whole day and getting the activity card, but you still have the research work. I'm, I'm not disappointing to attend, but I'm saying, what do you need? You should give the priority. What do you need? What is your purpose? Maybe you are from meteorology department, or maybe from the faculty, or maybe you have job back home, or maybe you don't have job like me. I didn't have job now, till now I don't have job in Bangladesh. So I, I was so serious. I have to do something and to get the job. Before finishing my PhD, I got the postdoc. Even I got the PhD program in Australia, Canada, even USA, you know, the COVID-19. COVID-19 has stopped me. Then I started PhD in Lewis. But I was supposed to go to Australia for my PhD. That means you should give your priority. What do you do? Because if you get the PR citizenship, that's another thing. You can do anything, whatever, for this. But think about China. Okay, thank you so much. <clears throat> okay, uh, finish, you, Secretary. That is, the, that is the end of the session. Uh, thank you once again, audience, Dr. Jarar, President, and all who have participated also from outside China. Uh, welcome you next time. Uh, say have a good night and also good afternoon to others. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you very much, Mita. Jai 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 Jai. Thomas Mita Dada.